as one of the few people lucky enough to have gotten a reasonable amount of seat time on both the all-new Himalayan 450 and the upcoming CF Moto Ibex 450, the most common question I've gotten since, and anytime I post about either, has been how do the two compare to each other? So grain of salt, I don't feel like I have enough time on either to do a comprehensive comparison, like one of my normal versus videos that's about 20 minutes long. But here are my quick thoughts on the differences between the two bikes as one of the few people who has gotten to ride them both. Shockingly, and by that I mean not at all shockingly, there's an extensive list of things that are very similar, the same, or that are basically close enough to be the same. It's not really worth splitting hairs. So they both have similar seat height, similar fuel capacity. The curb weight is similar between the two bikes. They both have ABS and that ABS is defeatable. You can turn it off on the rear in the off-road mode. Both have a six-speed transmission. Both have shockingly good suspension with nearly identical travel and both will do 85 miles an hour easy. And honestly, more than that, based on the time on the highway and the freeway I had with both of them. So they're not limited in the way that some smaller bikes are to just back roads and highways. You can ride them on the freeway, the interstate, the expressway, and comfortably do 85 miles an hour or more if you want to. Having said that, there are some significant differences. Perhaps the biggest and most obvious is that the Himalayan 450 is a thumper. It's a single cylinder engine. And and the Ibex 450 is a twin cylinder engine. The Ibex has slightly more horsepower and torque. The Himalayan has slightly more ground clearance. The Ibex has tubeless tires standard. The Himalayan, you can get them, but you have to buy the highest trim model, which raises the price just a little bit. The Himalayan is cheaper, but like I said, if you get the upgraded version with the tubeless tires, it's almost exactly the same price or close enough that you're not gonna debate a couple hundred dollars, right? They're essentially the same. The Ibex has the, what I would call industry standard 21 inch front wheel, 18 inch rear wheel. The Himalayan has a 21 inch front and a 17 inch rear, kind of like the KLR 650 and a few other bikes. So there are technically more tire options available for the 2118. That's not to say you can't find the tires that you want for a 2117. You're just gonna have a smaller selection because more bikes out there have a 2118 setup. The Ibex has fully adjustable suspension. The Himalayan suspension is not adjustable. The Himalayan comes with a three year warranty, including roadside assistance. So if build quality, reliability is something that you're concerned about, it's hard to beat three years with roadside assistance on the Himalayan. The Ibex has a two-year warranty that does not, as far as I've been able to find, include roadside assistance. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Ibex is made in China, and the Royal Enfield Himalayan is made in India. If that matters to you, I know some people have strong opinions about Chinese manufacturing, then that probably solves the question or debate between the two for you, but just be aware, one is Chinese, one comes from India. In terms of dealer support, CF Moto has over 600 US dealerships. They really got a foothold with their side-by-sides and their quads, and so they have a pretty big footprint. That's close to what the, some of the major manufacturers have. Uh, that's in the United States. Royal Enfield has just over 150 dealerships in the United States. So if dealer network in the US is a concern, CF Moto is far and away the winner there. Basically though, they're both well-priced dual sport adventure bikes capable of crushing miles on the highway and exploring deep into the backcountry. Both are easy to ride for beginners and the vertically challenged. I think it's really cool to see manufacturers targeting that shorter rider, giving them options like a factory lowering link on the CF Moto, but they both also offer plenty of capability to keep even experienced riders entertained. They're very similar. The difference in real world riding experience is minimal and almost purely subjective. Again, based on limited time with both, but rumor has it, I'm gonna have a little bit more extensive seat time on both, maybe even a long-term loan for one or the other or both of those bikes real soon. But honestly, to me right now, the biggest difference between these two bikes is styling. If you want the classic 20th century retro hipster look, you gotta go with the Himalayan. There aren't many bikes out there that offer that. If you want a modern spaceship looking motorcycle, then the Ibex is a great bike. Both of them have excellent build quality if you have any concerns about that. If you sat me on the Ibex and blindfolded me and told me it was a Yamaha, I'd believe you. And I was super impressed with the Himalayan when we were beating up on it and taking the fenders off because we got into some crazy mud in the wilds of Utah. Adjustable suspension is a big plus for the Ibex, but most newer intermediate riders have no idea how to even use that. And will just leave it at stock settings or ruin it with bad adjustments. So there's something to be said about the non-adjustable option, which while it is what it is, is you can't screw it up and make it any worse either. My advice is, as always, sit on both and test ride both if you can. They're both great bikes. 
both insane value for the price. Both will take you just about anywhere you want to go. And I think we're very lucky to have more low cost, more accessible ADB bikes hitting the market. It's going to be super interesting to see how our Japanese company friends react when both of these bikes are massive hits. And I think that they will be. The bar to entry, the price to entry is so low. The seat height is low and they're very capable of doing just about anything you might want to throw at them. So I really enjoyed both bikes. I was impressed by both bikes and I can't wait to get more seat time on both bikes. I would take either of them on the Oregon BDR tomorrow. Oregon BDR is supposed to be one of the toughest BDRs, top five or whatever. I would not hesitate to take either of these bikes on that trip. So whatever that means to you, take that knowledge, take it to heart. But if you're trying to debate between the two, sit on them both, take them for a ride if you can. And I'm hoping to get you a more comprehensive comparison as well as in-depth reviews on both bikes later on. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel for those. And also because I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent!